What's up guys and welcome to the video. Got a pretty cool topic that I want to chat about today. So whenever I'm consulting with a new client that's applying for coaching, I ask them what their goals are. And the most common goal by far is wanting to lose fat, build muscle at the same time. Now to do both of these things at the same time is referred to as body recomposition or recomp. Now, generally body recomp is quite unlikely because one of the processes requires a calorie surplus and one of the processes to be done optimally requires a calorie deficit. Now, there are some unique situations in which body recomposition is quite likely. And this is when one, the individual has just begun lifting weights, i.e. a noob. Two, when the individual is overweight or obese. And three, when the individual is using anabolic steroids or uh, PEDs. Outside of these situations, it is generally agreed that body recomposition is quite difficult. However, there was a recent review paper, and I'll chuck it up on the screen, published by Chris Barakat and colleagues, which actually demonstrated that according to the research, there are numerous incidences of body recomposition taking place in healthy weight people with reasonable weight training experience. The paper did point out, however, that for body recomposition to take place in normal weight, weight trained people, some criteria are usually met. Now, these criteria included one, following a progressive, challenging, and regular weight training program. Two, having a method in place to track, monitor your progress. Three, consuming a high protein intake of 2.6 to 3.5 grams per kilogram of your fat-free mass. Four, the use of protein supplements, particularly post-workout. Five, having a high sleep quality and quantity. So if you meet all of these criteria and you are of a healthy normal weight with a solid weight training experience, this paper certainly does suggest that recomposition could be possible for you. Now, does this mean this is the objective that you should go for? Not necessarily. I have worked with many clients trying to go down the recomp track and I'm quite confident that alternating between targeted phases of fat loss and muscle gain is a more productive use of your time and will develop a superior physique compared to a time equated period of trying to achieve fat loss and muscle gain simultaneously. Now, why am I talking about recomp? Because I think there is a fourth situation that we haven't discussed in which you should actually really go for body recomp. And that situation is after coming off an extended period of time away from the gym. I've just had six weeks of cold turkey away from the gym, losing a substantial amount of my size. The reason I think body recomp is highly likely for my situation is because one, muscle memory is a very real thing and that muscle mass loss is gonna come back very quickly. And two, my muscles have not been exposed to tension for a long period of time. Therefore, they are going to have a heightened sensitivity to that loading in a similar vein to a noob entering the gym for the first time. So with these two factors considered, I think we can confidently say that there is a heightened propensity for rapid muscle growth without the need for a massive calorie surplus like you normally would. So after a long layoff, a lot of muscle growth happening with not a lot of food required, that sounds like a recipe for recomposition in my cookbook. I've realized that if I'm ever going to go for body recomposition, the best chance of me succeeding with that objective is right now due to my circumstances. So if you wondered why I'm eating much less compared to my previous bulking phases, now you know why. What is up guys? We have a chest and bicep session going down here with my good friend, Yola. Goes by many names, Prima Yola. So he's a trainer here at uh, Body Factory, MMA, martial artist, Asian Games, gold medalist, complete badass, and possibly the best looking man in Indonesia. 
<laughs> but I've been helping him with a bit of his training uh, and he's just started blowing up. I was put out of the gym for six weeks with my injury. I came back and I was like, what the hell? So we're going to hit it hard today. Anything you want to add to that? <laughs> just hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So first movement, we're doing a seated cable fly. So this, I like to start with a movement that is very safe, not a compound movement to drive some blood in the, into the chest, get it really warm before we go into our heavier work. So the cues that I like to use on these is when you're bringing the cables together, don't think about bringing your hands together. Think about trying to touch your biceps together and you'll get a lot better activation driving with your chest instead of other areas. So we've just done our warm-up sets now. We're gonna go into our heavy set. I'm gonna go first and y'all will hit next. So first compound movement <laughs> going down. The Smith gets a lot of hate. People like to say like, oh, what about your stabilizer muscles? And it's like, by that logic, we should do all of our movements standing on BOSU balls. So my opinion is that movements that allow you to safely direct tension into the target muscle, that's gonna give you your best bang for your buck. You don't want energy and tension being distributed to external areas, i.e. areas that are trying to balance the weight. So I think Smith is a really great movement to have as a staple in your chest program. So Yola is gonna hit this firstly. The cues to look out for is not going too deep where it's gonna bang up your shoulders and not flaring out your elbows too much, which is gonna cause some shoulder impingement as well. to biceps now. There's a lot of research that shows regional hypertrophy can happen depending on whether you're working a muscle in a stretched or a shortened position. So with that in mind, it makes sense to work a muscle at different ranges of motion. So with this stride curl, we're working the bicep in a stretched position. So we're gonna do a top set and a back off set for that. And then we're gonna alternate to our next movement, which is going to work the bicep in a shortened position. And ideally this will give us the maximum amount of growth regionally through working in both ranges of motion.
So last movement for biceps, always like to finish with some sort of hammer variation so we're getting work in the brachialis. So a cable set up here keeps everything nice and locked in, we've got tension the whole way through like you can see with Yola doing. Happiness I've seen you all day. So I say one set left. Yola doesn't say until failure. He says, How many until die? See you for the next video. Bye. Alrighty, guys, that is going to be a wrap for today's video. Pretty solid chest and bicep session uh, with my man Yola. Still working back up the intensities because believe it or not, I am still recovering from that motherfucking bitch of a wound that just won't seem to completely heal. But we are doing something and something is better than nothing. Hope you guys got something from today's video. Going to try to make them a little bit more regular moving forward as I am able to at least do a little bit in the gym and gather a bit more uh, valuable content. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I'd really appreciate it if you could. And if you did enjoy the video or found something helpful, if you could share something to your story, that definitely helps me out and it shows me that these uh, videos are being appreciated. But that's all for now. I'll catch you guys in the next one.